Destination Gobi is a 1953 American Technicolor World War II film released by 20th Century Fox. It was produced by Stanley Rubin, directed by Robert Wise and stars Richard Widmark and Don Taylor. U.S. Navy Chief Sam McHale takes command of a unit of weather observers stranded behind Japanese lines deep in Inner Mongolia. McHale must lead his men across the treacherous Gobi Desert to the sea coast. Mongols whom the sailors had befriended, led by Chief Tengu, help them elude the Japanese and steal a Chinese junk in order to reach Okinawa. After the picture's opening credits, a written foreword reads, In the Navy records in Washington, there is an obscure entry reading saddles for Gobi. This film is based on the story behind that entry, one of the strangest stories of World War II. The unit involved was part of the Sino-American Cooperative Organization. Referred to as Sino-American Combined Operations in the film. Actor Ernest Borgnine has stated in interviews that he believed that this film, and Widmark's role of CPO Sam McHale, were the basis of the role of Quentin McHale in the television show McHale's Navy. Argos Detachment 6 is a Navy unit operating a weather station in the Gobi Desert during World War II. Heading the small outfit is meteorologist Lt. Commander Hobart Wyatt, but the group's ramrod is CPO Sam McHale, a tough-as-nails efficiency expert. He is all Navy and a literal fish out of water in the Gobi, having served for years at sea. One evening, a tribe of Mongolian nomads led by Kenk set up camp at the station's oasis. Despite stark cultural differences, the two groups settle into uneasy coexistence. In fact, Seaman Jenkins, an ex-cowboy, muses that the Mongol horsemen would make an excellent cavalry troop. Hoping to persuade the Mongols to help them defend the station against possible Japanese attacks, Mikhail requisitions 60 army-issue cavalry saddles. Although the request is met with bewilderment, the saddles soon arrive and the delighted Mongols train with Jenkins, accompanied by Elwood Halsey on his trumpet. Eventually, the camp is bombed by Japanese planes, killing Wyatt and several Mongols, destroying the station's radio. Afterwards, the Mongols disappear, leaving the Americans alone and defenseless. Mikhail decides to evacuate his men 800 miles to the sea, where they will sail to join U.S. forces on Okinawa. They reach an oasis where Chinese traders are camped. There, they encounter Kengtu, who explains he abandoned the station to protect his people from the birds in the sky. Later, the Mongols return their saddles. Chinese trader Yin Tang then barters for the saddles, offering Mikhail four camels, and suggests the Americans travel with his group. That night, Yin Tang attempts to kill them to steal back the camels, but he is stopped by the surprise reappearance of Kengtu's men. Telling Mikhail his followers desire the return of their saddles, Kengtu offers to escort the Americans to the sea if they disguise themselves in native garb. All goes well until they reach the Japanese-occupied city of Sangshin, China, where Kengtu leads Argus 6 into a trap set by Japanese soldiers, who transport them to a prisoner-of-war camp on the coast where they are held as spies. However, one of Kengtu's men, Wali Aken, allows himself to be arrested while wearing Wyatt's stolen uniform. Wally reveals that Kengtu has arranged for their escape, and that night they break out and head for the docks, where Kengtu is waiting with a Chinese junk. The wily Kengtu explains to Mikhail that their capture was a ploy to trick the Japanese into transporting them to the ocean. Kony is killed during the escape, however, and the novice sailors soberly set sail for Okinawa. The junk is later spotted by American planes. As the pilots make ready to drop bombs, they notice a large sign with the inscription USS Cohen painted on it. The men are rescued, Mikhail is awarded the Navy Cross, and Kengtu and Wally are returned to their people, along with 60 new saddle blankets. Thanks for watching.